Hello everyone, my name is Ian Lynch. I'm a proud member of the Canadian Kennel Club and I also contribute to the Canadian Kennel Club's blog, The Dish. I'm super excited today because we're gonna cover a topic that is very, very important, very pressing and has led to a lot of confusion among the Canadian dog fancy and the members of the Canadian Kennel Club. I'm super lucky because Thora Brown is here and she's going to clear things up and explain things for us. And we're so grateful to have her here. Welcome, Thora. Hello, Ian. I will do my best. <laughs> well, so many members of the dog community know you and love you. But in case someone doesn't know who you are, can you give us your information, uh, how you got involved in dogs and how you're involved in dogs today? In a nutshell, I showed my first dog at the Barry Kennel Club show in May of 1960. Wow. I, I was a teenager. Um, from there, I worked for a whole bunch of people through my teenage and university years. Um, met, met my husband through dogs. We together have bred Irish setters, English cockers, now are proud owners of a number of whippets. We have been members of numerous kennel clubs in the Ottawa, general Ottawa area. I am a 50 year Canadian Kennel Club member. I served on the board of directors for two terms. I was chairman of the board. I have served on numerous committees, the EOC. I was liaison to the tracking council. I'm currently on the confirmation council again. I have been a CK, what used to be the CKC dog show rep in Eastern Ontario. Anything within the confirmation world, more or less I've done. I am an all breed judge. I have judged in 27 countries, I think, around the world, and um, I still love the sport. Well, we're happy to have you. We're lucky to have you here in Canada. So let's get started on ROEs. What are ROEs? What is an ROE? <laughs> oh, the great question. The ROE stands for Rules of Eligibility for Registration under the Animal Pedigree Act of Canada. And I read that because I want to get it accurate. As, you, as everyone knows, CKC is incorporated under the Animal Pedigree Act, which is a piece of federal legislation. We are one of, if not the only kennel club, which operates under government controls, if you like, government auspices. Um, we must follow what the Animal Pedigree Act tells us a registry must provide. And a registry are those four, cattle, sheep, swine, llamas, uh, anything that has a registered pedigree, dogs, cats, falls under the Animal Pedigree Act. And the Act says that we will have rules of eligibility for each breed which we represent. And for the Canadian Cow Club, that's, I believe, 192 breeds at the moment. I'm close to 200. So I think a lot of people are wondering, are ROEs new? Is this something new that um, the Animal Pedigree Act has asked of us? Not exactly new. It was not, it was the late 1980s. Uh, and can't, the animal, the act itself was amended to a lot to demand that all registries would have an ROE for every breed it registered. And most registries, the cattle, whatnot, are a handful of breeds. The Canadian Kennel Club is the only one with a massive number of breeds. At that point, we were 160 some breeds, which was part of the difficulty with the ROE because there were so many to be done. And these ROEs had to be included in the bylaws. And so the, the prospect of including over 160 new items in our bylaws was overwhelming. And that, that was part of the start of the difficulties what were they supposed to be? How were they supposed to be fitted in? What form were they going to take? And that called for a great, that, that created a great stall at the beginning, trying to figure out how it was all going to fit together. And then the, uh, in nine, uh, sorry, 2000 and, uh, let me consult my notes, 2005, Ag Canada was reviewing the Canadian Kennel Club's bylaws and realized that nothing had happened with ROEs. And they said, you are not in compliance. And until you are in compliance, they would not recognize new breeds, would not move forward on other things. And that was really the, the push to make CKC get into getting these ROEs done. 
Absolutely. And then, of course, there needed to be a committee. So the ROE committee was formed yes. to get yes. this massive project, this huge thing done. Now, what would be included in a breed's rules of eligibility? The rules of eligibility are a physical descriptor of those key elements that make up a breed. We, the committee created with working with Ag Canada, a 10 point template. These things have to be, they're genetic, they're, they're, they're externals, they, because it's a breeding. You have to remember that Ag Canada approaches everything looking at the breeding aspect of the dog. This is not a show question. This is not a, anything to do with show. It's the, a breeding register. The ROE sets the minimal standard for a breeding animal. So the things it describes have to be observable, identifiable, genetically transmittable, measurable even, very physical externals. And for a lot of us, when we're dealing with our, our breeds, there's a lot of phrases in breed standards which elaborate on physical things into less physical. And so that's the transition. The ROE is a 10-point document of, of those key traits which describe a breed. Thora, can you tell us what's included in an ROE? Well, as I said, that we work from a 10-point template. And it starts off with the size of the breed because very important. And we have a size chart. We don't get into the, the new, specific numbers, like 27 and a half inches, but we have five categories. So very small, small, medium, large, very large. And we have a, a height and weight uh, descriptor for each category. Particularly when we get to the larger breeds, they can't sometimes fall between the large and very large, uh, but that's okay. You, we can have the division. So size, color, important basic quality for any dog. An Irish setter that is not red is not an Irish setter. If he's black and white, he's something else or nothing. Um, and so color is very important. And we take the basic breed colors that, that are within the breed standard. Then we have color markings. And these will elaborate on the tan patterns, the white mar white and markings on different parts of the body, uh, coat texture and length. Again, very specific to breeds. Short and smooth, long, uh, woolly-ish, thick, undercoated, not wiry, different qualities. Then the body. And here we get into the proportions. Is it a square dog, an off-square dog, uh, a, a truly rectangular dog? Ear shape and placement, obvious. Side of the head, top of the head, what shape is it? Tail shape and carriage, typical and distinctive breed characteristic. Feet, what kind of working foot does it have to do its job? And then two sections which are not always completed, unique characteristics. And these, not all breeds have something that is truly unique. Herein we mean the ridge on Rhodesian Ridgeback, the spotted pattern on a Dalmatian something that truly is a unique, observable quality to a breed. And then the last one, genetic observable variabilities. And here we have things that perhaps some breeds have uh, two or three different coat possibilities within, this, within the genetic pool. And that's what, but those two are, can be left blank with no problem. So those are the characteristics that go into an ROE. If someone wants to see an example of an ROE, is there a, part on the website, ckc.ca, where we can find them? Exactly the place to go to look. Under breeding, uh, down there you will see it, ROE, go in there. And there are currently 18 breeds there, but we now have a total of 65 approved breeds. The last group came down just recently from the ministry. And so if you want to read what they're all sporting, no, they're not all sporting and hound breeds are the ones we started with. And there are some of the miscellaneous breeds have, have gotten onto there because to be qualified to become a miscellaneous breed, they had to have an ROE. So there are copies there that people can go and look at and see how different breeds have described themselves. What's the process for the ROE becoming approved? It starts with the ROE committee. There's three of us, plus our CKC director, liaison and our staff liaison from uh, CKC. We draft, we write a draft ROE because we've had the experience with Ag Canada. We know what they like, what they get upset about. We write, take the breed standard, 
go through it and pick out the key points, words that would fit into our template and write a draft. We then contact the breed, National Breed Club for a representative to discuss this with us. If there isn't a national breed club, or perhaps a regional club functioning, we will contact them. For those breeds that don't have any club affiliation, we go back into who are breeding this breed. Uh, it becomes difficult sometimes with some of them, but we hunt down somebody who has had experience with the breed. We then consult with this person, go through the ROE with them, have their input as to refining what we've said, what we have there, uh, adding anything if we've missed it. They then take it and, dis and discuss it with other breeders, members of their club, anyone uh, um, associated with the breed, and then send back to us a, a revised uh, ver version of the ROE. The committee looks at what they've done, if we're happy with it, then we have an ROE. If we think there is still a few things that need tweaking, we set up discussion back and forth until we have a, an approved document. Then we get into the voting section. And the first level of voting is done by people who have bred a litter of the breed within the last five years. And anyone that they deem as um, fancy or an enthusiast of the breed. And these can be people who have bred in the past, but perhaps are not breeding now, who have had years of experience with a breed and are knowledgeable about it, but perhaps never were active breeders. The old timers who know what it's about. It's not for people who have been a one dog pet owner once in a while. These are true enthusiasts of the breed. Those people need to register with CKC. And when we get into the process of the actual vote, People who are breeders within the last five years will get a notice that the vote is taking place. These enthusiasts will need to register and there is a spot, will be a spot on CKC page. Uh, and then they will be sent a notice for voting as well. Once that vote passes, the ROE is then eligible for a CK, the CKC referendum. And this is not on the wording of the ROE. Once it goes to the CKC referendum, this is strictly the technicality of including it within the bylaws. Because there are so many ROEs, they're in an appendix to the bylaws. The actual bylaw itself more or less states, we agree that the boxer will have an ROE and then the actual ROE is attached. And so that's all the CKC vote is. The problem arises, and here is one thing I really would like to stress to people, we often find our, our, our CKC referendums do not get 25% membership vote. And for things to pass, we need at least 25% of the membership to vote. Whether you vote yes or no will balance itself out. But if we only get 23% of the membership voting and they all vote yes, it doesn't matter. We need 25%. And so I know this comes up every time we have a referendum and I can only repeat it again, vote. Um, vote, vote, vote. Vote when it's at your breed level, but certainly vote when it's the CKC referendum. Absolutely. So you were saying earlier that we now have ROEs created for sporting hounds and the miscellaneous breeds. Right, 65, I think it's 65 altogether. Fantastic. So what is the ROE committee working on right now? Yes, we have, the committee has actually finished the rough draft for all breeds. Wow. We worked super hard through the summer. I have to commend my, my com committee members. We worked probably sometimes twice a week uh, through Zoom meetings, and we have completed all the drafts for all breeds. Wow. Since we, we're, we're progressing in a, what we think semi-logical manner, we started with the sporting hounds. And so we now are in the process of having these meetings with the breed clubs. And we have completed all of working group except for one, two, three, four, five, six. We're wow. missing six breeds there. Uh, uh, the other ones we have had all that we've had the first stage of discussion with them. The ROEs have gone back to the breed clubs for consultation, discussion, and for and they will be coming back to us hopefully down through November and December. 
once we get through them, then we will progress terriers, toys, non-sporting, birdie. And I think a big, a big part of your committee is to explain to these breeders and clubs exactly how to create an ROE or to approve an ROE. I think um, a lot of times it's probably been difficult to explain to breeders and dog show people because we're so focused on the standard. Absolutely. And that's where they have to step back and say, this isn't a breed standard. It's not three pages of minute detail of what makes a Doberman a Doberman. It's a 10.50 word, give or take, high, hitting the highlights. They are a medium-sized dog of this color with a smooth, silky coat that is rectangular in shape, carries its tail here, has big, tight, has nice tight feet, um, and whatever. But uh, And it has to be physical. So many breeders, and again, it's because of our love of our breed and the image we create from our breed standard you know, has a beautiful eyes and it stares off into the distance and has an elegant, you know, that those are all lovely words, but those are dog show words. And this is not dog show. We are talking about the ROE truly is, would you use this dog for breeding? These are the minimal qualities that a dog in a breeding program should have for you to say, he hasn't got the greatest this, he hasn't got the greatest that, but yes, he's a good, he's a representative of a Pharaoh hound and therefore he can be bred. So you got to basically set aside all your dog show points and okay. kind of think of it like if you were sending someone who is not a dog show person into a room with 10, 15 dogs and you said, here's 10 points, bring me back the dog and you get a prize, right. they would be able to do it with these 10 exactly. points. <laughs> that's, that's about it. Um, and I know people say, but that's so minimum. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I think sometimes the challenge with ROEs is that we're not asking that much and that kind of has become the challenge because it's 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 kind of simpler than people think it is in a and way. Exactly. And, and people now, want to make more out of it. They, they don't have to. Exactly. The good news, it's easier than you think it's going to be. The <laughs> the template for all breeds though, the 10 points, those are the same across. So every breed, every breed gets the 10 points. Will an yeah. ROE ever change? Can it ever change once it's um, approved? Uh, that's a good, very good question. Theoretically, yes, it can. Uh, but again, it would have to go through the whole process. Discussion by uh, a breed club, uh, vote by the breed, the breeders enthusiasts, and then go to referendum again. So it's this, it would be the same process. And hopefully, we're hitting all the good points now. But the, yes, indeed, in theory, yes, it can be amended, but it would be the same process. So it would be a lengthy process, but it could happen. Yeah. Now, a lot of readers are probably wondering this. We're wondering, do these rules of eligibility make puppy registration any more difficult, any more complicated? Not really. This was part of our discussion with Agriculture Canada that they wanted, a lot of canine breeds change a great deal from six weeks or eight weeks to adulthood. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about a breeding animal, we're talking about an adult animal. Therefore, the qualities described in the ROE are the qualities the adult will have. And therefore, it was decided that the ROE will be applied to the parents of a litter, not to the members of the litter, but to the sire and dam. On each litter registration, there will be a box that the breeder will tick off that the parents adhere to the requirements of the ROE. And it's a simple yes, no. And if you, indeed the sire and the dam meet the ROE of the breed, bingo, you're fine. The litter will be registered. But if the, one of the parents does not meet the ROE, if the breeder cannot attest that he is within the size or the color or the whatever, there's go, it will not be a registered litter. I see. So no. in terms of complicated, it's a, simply another box that the parents are, are eligible. Now, a question going back to the referendum. So you are saying that, you know, you um, ROEs can be amended. It just is a long process. They basically have to go back to the start again. If, for example, the votes that were required to approve the ROE during the referendum, if those, if the 25% wasn't matched, what happens in that case? Does it just wait until the next referendum? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it's, again, very important to vote because very We're trying important. to move forward with this. <laughs> exactly. This has been ongoing now for a long time. And it's 
I mean, I, I don't want to put this badly, but even if you voted no, at you voted. And so if the majority, it's a majority vote. And, uh, but as we have to get 25% of the whole membership and then get at least 50% of those. So yes, it's very important to vote. When, if everything goes well and everything goes smoothly and everyone votes, 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 when do you expect all the rules of eligibility to be completed and approved? Well, that's a very good question. Hopefully we will have the working group and the terrier group ready for the next CKC referendum. And then that would leave uh, toys, non-sporting herding for the referendum after that. So uh, conceivably five years. Okay. Perhaps yeah. less if we can get the breed standard, the, the, the last three groups done and CKC felt generous, we could hold a special referendum, but realistically, I would be looking at five years. Okay. And considering it's been going on since the late eighties, we're, we're really uh, nearing the finish line here. No. And a special referendum say in, in a year and a half earlier would be very nice, but. Fantastic. Okay, so as we're finishing up here, I wanted to ask you, is there anything you wanna tell CKC members that they can do to make this process easier for the ROE committee? Because I know how hard you guys are working. I think the key is for breeders to keep their eyes open for their breed notices. If you are a member of your uh, national breed club, which one I would hope you were, when we pay attention to when we get to your group and your breeds, because you're going to be consulted, listen, discuss, let your voice be heard. Don't sit in the wilderness and then come out and complain when it comes time to vote. Let's get it right, get the vote done and vote. That truly is the, for me, the, the essence that people need to realize we now have 65 breeds done. That's well up a, over a third of, of all breeds. We're progressing really well. The meetings with the breed clubs are going so well. People are cooperative, they, they're um, eager to take part in it, they're good with their suggestions, um, and now we're getting down, we should be starting the breed voting in January, um, which would be great, and then we'll, uh, we'll start working, as I say, into the terrier breeds. So that's really where I would like people pay attention, watch for the notices, uh, your monthly newsletters, um, Jeff's monthly uh, comments about things, the ROE committee intends to make, once we're at the voting stage, getting things out on all the media, Facebook and chit chat and TikTok and Bing Bong, um, get all these things out. So it's, the, it's going to be there. There will be notices, get involved. And finally, if someone has a question, a specific question about ROEs or ROEs in general, how can they get in touch with the ROE committee? They can contact through CKC, our, D, our representative, Deirdre Jones, um, they can write her djones at ckc.ca and she will redirect the questions. Um, she has, a, if it's a technical procedural thing, she can answer um, or she directs it to the committee and we will get back to the person. Perfect. So that's djones at ckc.ca. If you have any specific questions, we can help you exactly. with those. Yep. Thank you so much, Thora, for being here and for all the work you've done in the past and continue to do right now in the present and day. And all the members future. of the committee. I, I, I can't take it all on myself. I, we've had two really strong committees and uh, yeah, we've worked hard. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ian. <laughs>